This is part of the videos on neuroendocrine tumors, which are rare tumors. They tend to be less aggressive and they originate from tissue that produces hormones or chemicals. And sometimes these tissue retain that ability to secrete chemicals. We shall examine the small bowel and the colon neuroendocrine tumors. We shall assess the symptoms, the tests required and the treatment. First, the symptoms. The symptoms may be from the primary tumor itself. Let's look at this cartoon over here. And you can see the stomach, the small bowel, which is connected to the colon. And here in black, you see a neuroendocrine tumor, which is slowly constricting the small bowel, making it more and more difficult for content to go through, giving rise to colicky abdominal pain and vomiting over a course of time. The same may occur in the colon, where the symptoms are more protracted and often patients present after having had the tumor for many years. These tumors spread to the local lymph nodes which are small kidney shaped tissue and it has function in immunity and it also traps cancer cells so those in black show that this cancer has now spread to the lymph nodes this cancer can also be at multiple sites within the small bowel and it is not uncommon for patients to present after having had the cancer for many years which has now spread to the liver with multiple spots in the liver as well since these tumors can secrete chemicals a particular condition called carcinoid syndrome may occur where these chemicals are now active and these chemicals cause diarrhea flushing and abdominal pain. The most dangerous part of this is the effect on the heart of these chemicals called carcinoid heart. So what tests are required for this tumor? Typically a CT scan or an MR scan is very useful in determining these tumors and making a reasonable guess about the morphology of this tumor. This is a CT scan of the liver showing multiple neuroendocrine tumor deposits. These tumors have receptors for a naturally occurring hormone somatostatin which is used in special tests called SRS scintigraphy which pick up the tumors which are bright in colored over here in these two pictures where the whole body is scanned and then this scan is superimposed on a CT scan giving rise to a good determination of the diagnosis as well as the spread. This is discussed in much more detail in the specific video on investigations of neuroendocrine tumors. Apart from routine blood tests there are specific blood tests to examine the secretion of chemicals from these tumors and these tumors are also detected in urine tests. A biopsy is hugely helpful because we can determine how aggressive these tumors are by determining the grade dependent on how quickly the tumor is dividing. There is grade G1 which is good, G2 is intermediate and G3 is poor prognosis and differentiation about how the tumor matches the original tissue and this too is in three separate boxes which is well differentiated that is there it is quite similar to the tissue or it's moderate or poorly differentiated where it has no similar similarity. And having this information makes it easy for the clinicians to make judgments about the patient's prognosis and what treatments might be appropriate. Now let's examine the treatment. All patients should be treated with somatostatin analog. As mentioned before, there's a naturally occurring hormone that stops the secretion from these tumors, slows down the growth of the tumors and reduces symptoms. There are now long acting versions of these available, which can be taken once a month or longer. Wherever possible, surgery should be considered for patients, but before we get to that, there are important determinations to make, firstly about the patient and their fitness to undergo any treatment at all, and then tailoring the most appropriate treatment, as well as the tumor itself, whether it lends itself to surgery or not. Surgery with an intention to cure would aim to remove the tumor, as shown over here, together with all the involved in the lymph node, and then rejoining the bowel further downstream to restore the continuity of the GI tract. This may not always be possible because the lymph nodes may be in locations that cannot be removed, and then surgery may be palliative where the tumor is removed so that the obstruction can be overcome and patients may have a better quality of life. In this tumor, a stage four disease, which is spread to the liver, typically, or lymph nodes, in far off places or other spots would make them candidates for aggressive treatment, including surgery and other modalities, which I shall discuss separately. This was a brief overview of neuroendocrine tumor of the small bowel and colon. Please do review other videos in this series in the playlist. If you have any comments, please do share.